Good day, everyone. I'm Mr. Rishi Tutasfai, your biology teacher. This is grade 12 biology, week 16. The lesson for this week is chapter 35, lesson 4, immune system disorder, part 2, which is a continuation of last week's lesson. Your textbook page, 1025 to 1027. Objectives of the lesson. At the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how HIV is transmitted and how it affects the immune system and explain how HIV infection can be prevented. HIV and AIDS. What causes AIDS and how is it spread? 1983, researchers identified the cause of AIDS a virus called HIV, which is an abbreviation for human immunodeficiency virus. HIV can be transmitted through contact with infected blood, semen, vaginal secretions, or breast milk. The only no-risk behavior with respect to HIV transmission is abstinence from sexual activity and intravenous drug use. Well, how did scientists discover the cause of AIDS? During the late 1970s, Physicians began reporting serious infections produced by microorganisms that did not normally cause disease previously. Healthy people began to suffer from pneumocystis carini, pneumonia, Kaposi sarcoma, a rare form of skin cancer, and fungal infections of the mouth and throat. Since these diseases are normally prevented by a healthy immune response, doctors concluded that these patients must have weakened immune systems. These diseases that attack a person with a weakened immune system are called opportunistic diseases. Therefore, doctors ultimately recognized that these illnesses were symptoms of a new disorder uh, they called acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, which is abbreviated as AIDS. Let's now look at a few features of HIV. HIV is deadly for two reasons. One, HIV can hide from the defense of the immune system. And two, HIV attacks key cells within the immune system, leaving the body with inadequate protection against other pathogens. HIV is a retrovirus that carries its genetic information in RNA rather than DNA. What happens is that HIV, when HIV attacks cell, binds two receptor molecules on the cell surface membrane and inserts its content into the cell. As you can see in the diagram right here, uh, a virus attached to the host surface membrane by recognizing specific molecules on the cell surface membrane. Okay, you can see here, okay, the cell uh, capsid, the protein attached to the host cell surface membrane. Then, the viral coat fuses with the cell surface membrane and a viral RNA enters the cell. As you can see here, the viral RNA enters uh, the cell, okay, while the protein coat or the capsid remains outside on the host cell surface membrane. Then, uh, a kind of enzyme, a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase, okay, uses viral RNA as a template to make viral DNA. A viral DNA is made from viral RNA. That is a, a unique feature of retroviruses. Then the viral uh, DNA enters the nucleus of the host cell and attached to the host cell's DNA, as you can see. So the viral DNA enters the nucleus and inserts itself into the host DNA. There, it may begin direct the synthesis of viral RNA and messenger RNA. You see, uh, uh, it uh, instructs the host cell DNA to prepare messenger RNA and uh, viral RNA. Then, the viral messenger RNA directs the uh, host cell to assemble viral proteins. The viral proteins will be assembled uh, through uh, the use of messenger RNA so that the virus will become fully matured and then finally it leaves the cell okay it buds of the cell uh, surface membrane and possibly uh, infect nearby host cell
the target of HIV. The target of HIV is the T cells. HIV travels through the blood where it binds to helper T cells, which are the common centers of the specific immune response. Once inside the cell, the virus directs the cell to produce many new viruses. These new viruses are quickly released back into the bloodstream where they infect new cells. Over time, HIV destroys more and more T cells, crippling the ability of the immune system to fight HIV and other pathogens. The progression of HIV infection can be monitored by counting the number of helper T cells. The fewer the number of helper T cells, the more advanced the disease and the more susceptible the body becomes to other diseases, the uh, so-called uh, opportunistic diseases. When an HIV-infected person's T cell count reaches about one-sixth of the normal level, he or she is diagnosed with AIDS. HIV transmission. Although HIV is deadly, it is not easily transmitted. It is not transmitted through coughing, sneezing, sharing clothes, or other forms of casual contact. HIV can only be, uh, can only be transmitted through contact with infected blood, semen, vaginal secretions, or breast milk. The four main ways that HIV is transmitted is through sexual intercourse with an infected person, sharing needles with an infected person, contact with infected blood or blood products, or from an infected mother to her child during pregnancy, birth, or breastfeeding. Preventing HIV infection. You can choose behaviors that reduce your risk of becoming infected with HIV. Within a committed relationship such as marriage, sexual fidelity between two uninfected partners presents the least risk of becoming infected with HIV. People who share contaminated needles to inject themselves with drugs are at an increased risk for contracting HIV. People who have sex with drug abusers are also at an increased risk. Before 1985, HIV was transmitted to some partners, uh, so, sorry, to some patients uh, through transfusions of infected blood or blood products, but such cases have been virtually eliminated by screening the blood supply for HIV antibodies and by discouraging potentially infected individuals from donating blood. Uh, the graph right here uh, shows how the number of 13 to 24 year olds living with AIDS increases uh, over time in the United States. In 2002, it was only 6,000 uh, individuals in that age range with uh, AIDS. But in uh, 2005, it increases to uh, 8,000, uh, nearly uh, about 2,000 more uh, than it was in 2002. Finally, can AIDS be cured? Well, at present, there is no cure for it. New drugs, however, make it possible to survive HIV infection for years. Unfortunately, HIV mutates and evolves rapidly. The virus has evolved into many strains that are resistant to most drugs used against them. No one has developed a vaccine that offers protection for any length of time. At present, the only way to control the virus is to use a combination of expensive drugs that fight the virus in several ways. Current drugs interfere with the, enzyme, the enzymes HIV uses to insert its RNA into a host cell, to convert RNA to DNA, and to integrate its DNA into the host cell's DNA. The knowledge that HIV can be treated has given some people the idea that HIV infection is not serious. However, that idea is dead wrong because there is no cure for HIV. Thank you very much for watching. See you next time.